So I unpacked the bag for the peanut pasta sun-dried tomato and cream uh, pasta situation. So I'll be making it right here. Here's the little sample card uh, for the menu. So let's get cooking. Um, let's kind of start. Ignore this H-E-B bag. Just okay, so in and pocket it, we have baby bella mushrooms. We have fresh spinach, yum yum, parmesan, sun-dried tomatoes. We have light cream or creme, uh, tomato paste, peanut pasta, and a shallot. <sighs> One of the first things it tells me to do is to shallot or peel and mince the shallot. I'm a baker and I have no clue what any of those things mean, but we're gonna figure this out. But first, mushrooms. We are going to rinse these, pack them dry, and cut them into quarters. A pro tip, don't keep your cooking stuff too close because as you can see, I just got my cookbook wet. Hopefully it dries up. It's a nice waxy paper, so I think they, they accounted for something like this to happen. Either way, we are going to cut the mushrooms. All right, got mushrooms, I love mushrooms. I said, hey mushrooms, I love you, I do. All right, let's get on the shallot. Shit. So like I said, I don't know what to really do with this. So I'm just going to treat it like an onion, chop the bottom and the top, and dice it and hope for the best. Be right back. So what I can tell you is when I cut an onion, I like to get in there and at first just cut little slots. And usually that works better if I have both hands, but right now I can't have both hands because I'm trying to record for y'all. So just so you see, I like to look at you. You can see I cut some of the slots already here. And then I'll go back and then I'll chop this way and then I'll, it makes it nice. So give me like Four seconds, I'll be right back. Okay, bam, that's that. So, I got that all taken care of. <coughs> Whatever, I'm a bad gay, I can't click. But anyway, got the mushrooms, got the shallots, and let's see what's next. We are going to cook the vegetables. Wait, oh yeah, okay, yeah, so. So, we're gonna start with the olive oil, get that going, and we're gonna add mushrooms, shallot red, and the flakes to taste. I love it and salt and pepper cool okay I'm back so I had to get a pan um, I used this pan last night so I had to wash it but let me tell you something about this pan I swear by this pan um, back when I first moved out of my parents house back in like 2010 we're now 2020 the first thing I bought was a set of pot a set of pots for hands which are really cheap and he sucked but I also bought this so this is a nonstick skillet from the IKEA 365 plus collection I'm now an adult and have bought like the most expensive Cuisinart set you can buy, but I tell you what, through thick and thin, me and this skillet have been together and we will continue to be together. It's one of the best pieces of cookware I've owned and it's just great. All right, so let's get this olive oil going. It wants one, two tablespoons. So we'll get that going on medium high heat. So you're probably wondering, how do you know if it's right? What I like to do is I like to put my hand like right there and then like count to like maybe like 10 seconds. And at 10 seconds, if you want to pull away, then it's just right. If it's at five, it's a little hot, but you'll be all right. Just kind of lift it to the side like that for a little bit. Put it back, lift to the side, bring it back, lift to the side, bring it back, and it'll cool it down. Also, make sure you have your spatula ready because you're going to want to move this stuff around and, you know, make sure everything gets coated and everything. Also, y'all not going to clown me about my hands today. You're not going to do it. We are living in COVID world, which means we are washing our hands every freaking minute. All right. Carry some lotion. I'm good, though. All right. Now, so first, let's get this shallot in the bowl. All right. Go ahead and get our mushrooms in. Got a lot of mushrooms. Now in the pitch, their skillet looks big enough for this. So we're gonna continue what we're doing. Now before I add the seasonings, I like to go ahead and get everything going. Get everything nice and 
settle together, so to speak. So now they say go ahead and season it. Now they give you exact measurements for the seasoning, but I rely on my ancestors for that. Thank you very much. So here's the salt and pepper. It's just a pinch of pepper, but I love pepper. I love things to be a little spicy. So we're gonna have more pepper than normal. Also, my sense, my ancestors are from the world of extra, so we like to add extra seasoning. So I got this here garlic powder. I like seasoning. All right, now it also calls for one more ingredient, which is the red pepper flakes. They just sent like a regular piece. So I'm just going to throw that right on in there. All of it. They said the taste. I want to taste it. Here we go. All of it's in there. And now we'll give this a quick little saute and get ready for the next step. Now, the recipe says cook it until brown and tender about four to six minutes. Um, so that's about what we're looking at right now. And then it wants to transfer it to a plate because I think this is supposed to be a one skillet meal with pasta. So that sounds good to me. Oh, that's delicious. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so I have the mushrooms, salt and pepper all seasonings, and the onion slash shallot. Um, out of the pot and they said put it on a plate to the side. Now it's time for the next step. Next step is start the pasta. So we turn to the pan, use the cooked mushrooms to heat. What? This is a lot. Hold on y'all. Okay y'all, I didn't have a long day at work and I had came home and worked out and I'm just now uh, getting things together. Excuse me. So it says put that pan back on the high heat. Got it. And then we're going to add the sun dried tomatoes, tomato paste, and the vegetable paste to the hot pan and stir and combine. All right, so let's go ahead and do that first and then we'll get into this pasta. So we got the vegetable base, which is already running away over here with the sun-dried tomato and the tomato paste. It says smirks all that together. That tomato paste is a little, mm, yeah, let's see how we're gonna incorporate that. Y'all bear with me here. This is not, they say, this box said, this box said everybody could be a cook, so. I'm just going to assume I'm doing this correctly. Also, I think I'm burning something. Let's go ahead and get the pasta and the water in here because I do want to eat tonight. Since this don't want to participate and act like it want to burn, let me go ahead and get to it. I'm going to go ahead and add the water. That'll help it out some. Yeah, that should do it. And then let's go ahead and add the pasta. Recently, I've been making my own pasta, but I'm... All right, so I got my water in there with my sun-dried tomatoes. We're gonna go ahead and get this going. It said move it to high heat. So let's go ahead and crank that booger up. Cool. So, high heat, and then it says I should salt this. So, ancestors tell me when to stop. Okay, so I'm checking back in on this, and y'all don't laugh at me now at my little wooden spoon I cooked last night. And I use a lot of dishes last night when I cook, and I still have not washed everything because uh, there is enough room for these items in the dishwasher as well. Can you say conservation? That's right. So <clears throat> it's just to keep. We're gonna stir this occasionally, and we're gonna let it come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, then we're going to reduce the heat, and we're gonna let it simmer, stirring often. Okay. Um, it says that we should do this until there's about a cup of water left in here. Um, how we know that? I don't know, but we'll see. Okay, it says bring to a boil, and this is a skillet, so I'm gonna call that a boil. I'm gonna give this a quick stir. And give it a pinch of pepper just because it's not in the recipe, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Ooh, sorry for the steam. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna turn this down all right, so we're gonna let this calm down to the simmer stage, and we are looking for that cup of water left. No telling how long this should take, but I think this meal is supposed to take no more than 30 minutes to make. 25 to 35 minutes. I don't know what mark we at, but I'm also not being as fast as I could be. But it looks like we're moving on to the sauce, and then we'll be finishing it here soon. All right, so we got us a good simmer going. And I'm just gonna give that a quick little stir. And I'll also turn the heat up just a little bit because you know, I don't like to follow directions. But um, you know, my ancestors told me to do that. Uh, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna add grilled chicken to this recipe. This is supposed to be a veggie recipe, but 
How do you see? Okay, so I'm gonna be using the Grilled and Ready Tyson Grilled Chicken. Um, and hopefully there are two breasts in here because my boyfriend gets into things and he eats them without telling me and then I have to figure things out on the fly. So I'm gonna use this and I'm actually going to cook it in the air fryer. Yes, best thing ever. And it heats it up pretty quickly. All right, so first you wanna get your air fryer going. I just go ahead and turn it on. It doesn't matter what time I turn to because I'm gonna watch it. Now this, rest, the uh, instructions call for 375 in a conventional oven. I'm gonna lower this to 325 because it cooks faster with a higher heat and it's more direct. So I'm gonna let it preheat for just a bit. Okay, we gave this a quick start because you know, we can't forget about it. It's over here doing its thing. And I'm sure this is preheated enough. So let's go ahead and get our chicken loaded up. All right, so I dropped the grilled chicken in there. It's in there, it's frozen, which is fine. Um, it's good to go. Normally, if you want something crispy, you can add a little cooking spray to it and it'll actually crisp it up. But um, I don't want to do that. I want it to be ready for me to cut and be you know, nice and juicy. So we're gonna go ahead and pop it in and let it go. So this is coming together nicely. Um, there's a little bit, well, maybe like a cup and a half in there. So I'm gonna give this about two more minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, we're almost there. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna lower this heat some more. Reason why is because um, once I add the cream, if it's actually boiling or too hot, it can actually break the cream down. And we do not want that to happen. Uh, trust me, we do not want that to happen. Okay, we're just about ready for our cream, but remember my last little trick? We're gonna take that away and we bring it back. And we're gonna take it away and we're gonna bring it back because we need this to cool down just a little bit more before I add this cream. But I think we're just about ready to go. Look at that, look at that. Calm down, oven. All right, all right, so we're ready for the cream. And the one thing that I really like about Home Chef is they give you just what you need, just the amount you need, no more, no less. You don't have to do any measuring when it comes to the creams and the things like that, just maybe the water. And we'll add a, it costs for more salt, but I'm not gonna use as much salt as I've been using because we are near the end. So this is the salt that's really gonna stick around. So I'm literally going to do a pinch. All right, and let's consult the recipe. So we're gonna let this happen for about two to four minutes, stirring occasionally till it thickens. Cool, I can do that. And then we're gonna finish it up. Now we can't forget to check on our chicken. All right, so we're gonna check on it, check on it, check on it, check on it. Look at it, it's looking, it looking nice. Look at that, that brown, that's gonna be good. Um, let's go ahead and give these a flip and pop them back in for maybe two more minutes. And then they will be ready to go. And we'll slice that and put this over the pasta when it's done. Boop. All right, we are down to the nitty gritty, y'all. We can see that we're starting to lose moisture here, which means we are like pretty much done. So let's get everything else back into this pan, starting with the lovely magic trick that is spinach. Now the moisture from the spinach actually is probably gonna help make this a little bit better and make it a little more juicy. Can I say juicy? I don't know, I don't know, I don't care. I'm just gonna add the spinach now. And what a lovely, lovely, vanishing trick spinach does. I'm sure you're aware. You can put like a whole bag of spinach, like I'm doing right now, into the pot and watch it disappear because that's what's I went ahead and also added our mushroom back in there and I'm going to add some shaved Parmesan. Just a little bit at first and then get us to stir and let it cook down and then I'll put some more in and then I'll save some for a garnish. Okay. So I am a person that likes my spinach just wilted, but my boyfriend is not. He wants the spinach actually cooked down. So I'm gonna cook this a little bit longer to appease him. And then I'm going to get our chicken cut up because we are near the finish line, baby. All right, y'all pray for me because I forgot about this chicken. Please don't let it be burned. Please Jesus, don't let me burn the chicken. We are just good, cool. So I'm gonna transfer this to the cutting board and get it cut up because we are ready for presentation. All right, I got the chicken here. I'm gonna try to cut it up as gracefully as possible. Much grace. All right, so I got the chicken all cut up. I did it as gracefully as possible. Our pasta is ready to go. We are ready for plating, y'all. And I'm so excited. 
Okay, so when I play, I like to put the protein on the side so you can see your protein versus what you have here. So that's just about there. We're gonna go ahead and do a shade, some of the shade Parmesan right there on top. And then, you know, a little parsley, cause I put that shit on everything. And bam, there it is. So, you know, it don't look exactly like that. And probably because, you know, I blame them because my ancestor says this is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna add a little pepper though. A little bit more pepper, cause I like it spicy. One moment, please. All right, y'all, so I didn't kind of destroy my kitchen, but we got food. Let's take a tasty. Get a little everything on there. The mushroom, little possible spinach, no parmesan. And let's go. Just the right amount of spice. Oh yeah. Chicken is cooked perfectly. Mmm. 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 Lord Jesus. Mmm. Mm -mm. This is it.